the reason for treating this disease is that KSHV can actually infect various types of cells, including endothelial cells and B cells, and concurrent tumors such as KS or Kaposi sarcoma and Castleman's disease are common. In our approach to Castleman's disease at the NCI, we've treated patients with concurrent rituximab plus liposomal doxorubicin in a prospective study dating back to 2006. And our results from the study show that 95% of patients will have complete resolution of symptoms and just under 90% will have normalization of all laboratory abnormalities that are caused by Castleman's disease. This seems to be a durable approach to the treatment of Castleman's disease. And our data here today is looking at long-term follow-up in patients with KSHV-associated Castleman's disease. Interestingly, we found that in treating Castleman's disease, it's both idiopathic form and the KSHV-associated form. It's important to recognize that patients can present with a wide range of symptoms from minor fevers and anemia to severe um, edema or swelling, anemia, and can be hospitalized sometimes even in intensive care units. One of the questions we were looking at at the study today was to try to find out which baseline factors predicted good long-term outcomes in patients with Castleman's disease. We treated 22 patients over this time period. All patients uniformly received rituximab combined with liposomal doxorubicin. And we looked at HIV-associated factors, which in other cancers sometimes predict death. These are things like low CD4 counts or HIV, uh, uncontrolled HIV. We looked at Castleman's associated symptoms, including uh, circulating KSHV viral load, which is a marker of disease, as well as other laboratory abnormalities, which can be quite common. And we lastly looked at KS, or concurrent Kaposi sarcoma, as a risk factor. And Kaposi sarcoma can be quantified by how much disease you have, whether it includes uh, internal organs or just the skin, and if it includes the skin, how much skin is involved. And interestingly, looking at all of these factors, the only factor that predicted survival was advanced Kaposi sarcoma. In the study, patients with advanced Kaposi sarcoma at five years, 56% were alive, whereas those without advanced Kaposi sarcoma, the overall survival at five years and beyond was 91%, which was similar to other uh, cohorts treating it with just rituximab alone. I th additionally, in our study, we found that 70% of patients were free of disease after a short period of treatment. The median number of cycles with, was three, and patients received anywhere from three to nine cycles. Um, and these responses were durable once patients um, were uh, initially treated with, uh, with rituximab plus liposomal doxorubicin.